Since he took his place in 2012, Xi Jinping has ushered in an era of increased assertiveness and authoritarianism. This leader of the Chinese Communist power has rapidly consolidated power and has had his ideas mentioned by name in the constitution, which previously had only been reserved for Mao Zedong before. We can track his meteoric ascent from disgraced government official son to the man who managed to become president for life. Today, however, we ask, how did Xi Jinping get to where he is? Welcome to Neapolitan. Today, we'll be looking at the president of China, Xi Jinping. After Mao Zedong and Deng Xiaoping, the third Chinese leader has been front and center of Chinese push to affix its position as a global superpower, launching crackdowns on corruption and dissent alike. We will look at how a boy from Fuping County overcame his father's public disgrace and shot himself into power. He's reformed China, rewritten its history, and maintains a firm hold on everything in or out of the country. We're going to take a dive into where he's from, how he got here, and look at the man he is today. We'll be looking at it broken down into three unique sections, like Neapolitan ice cream, the vanilla, the who, what, where, and one of the folks that changed the world. Chocolate, that flavor punch. Controversy and adversity make lives so interesting. And the strawberry, the lasting legacy and lick that all Neapolitan lives come with. If you're interested in other videos like this, or different in-depth looks at essential people throughout history, then make sure you're subscribed to the channel with post notifications on so you never miss a single one. Without further ado, let's get into it. Vanilla Son of Zi Zhongzhong, who served as Deputy Prime Minister of China and an early comrade-in-arms of Mao Zedong, Zi Jinping was born June 15, 1953, in Fuping County, Shanghai Province, China. His father had held a series of posts after the founding of the PRC in 1949, including party propaganda chief, vice premier, and vice chairperson of the National People's Congress. Xi and his childhood went to Beijing No. 25 school, and then the Beijing Bai School in the 1960s. At age 10, Xi's father was purged from the CCP and sent to work in a factory in Laoyang, Henan. In 1966, the Cultural Revolution cut short Xi's secondary education, as students were urged to criticize and fight their teachers. Xi Zongsheng was imprisoned as an enemy of the revolution in 1968 when Xi was just 15. They wouldn't reunite until 1972 during a family reunion ordered by Premier Zhao Enlai. Without his father's protection, Xi was sent to work in Langzhai Village, Wenanyi, Yanchan County in 1969 as part of Mao Zedong's down-to-the-countryside movement. He worked as the party secretary in Langzhai, where he lived in a cave house. A few months went by and Xi could no longer stand rural life, so he ran away to Beijing. He was arrested during a deserter crackdown and sent to work in a camp to dig ditches. He would later return to his work in the village, spending seven years there. These misfortunes and hardships suffered by his family in his early years hardened Xi's view on politics. He said in a 2000 interview that his run-ins with power gave him a much more accurate picture of what it meant to be in control and what he believed was a deeper level than most. He tried seven times to join the Communist Youth League of China before being finally accepted in 1971 by befriending a local official. From 1973 on, he applied to join the CCP 10 times, accepted after his 10th attempt in 1974. From 1975 until 1979, Xi studied chemical engineering at Tsinghua University as a worker peasant soldier student in Beijing. The engineering majors there spent about 15% of their time studying Marxism, Leninism, Mao Zedong thought, and 5% on farm work and learning the People's Libertarian Army. Xi served from 1979 to 1982 as his father's former subordinate Gang Bao's secretary as he was the vice premier and secretary general of the CMC. Through this, Xi began to gain some military background, sent as part of a broad delegation to study U.S. agriculture abroad. Xi stayed with an American family in 1985 in the town of Muscatine, Iowa. This trip and stay are said to have left an impression on his views of the United States. Between 1998 and 2002, Xi studied Marxist theory and ideological education at Tsinghua University and graduated in 2002 with a doctorate in law and ideology. 
In 1999, Xi was promoted to the office of Vice Governor of Fujian, where he made efforts to attract investments from Taiwan to strengthen the private sector of the provincial economy. In 2002, he left Fujian and took up leading political positions in the neighboring Zhejiang. While there, Xi presided over reported growth rates of 14% per year. His career was marked by a strict and straightforward stance against corrupt officials, earning him a name among national media and drawing the attention of China's top leaders. Xi to this day is considered among the most successful members of the Crown Prince Party, a quasi clique of politicians descendants of early Chinese communist revolutionaries. Over time, he has held a wide array of portfolios in charge of such projects as the comprehensive preparations for the 2008 Beijing Summer Olympics. He is the central government's leading figure in Hong Kong and Macau's affairs. He became the new president of the Central Party School of the CCP and would later visit the disaster areas of Shangxi and Gansu after the 2008 Sichuan earthquake. After the Olympics, Xi took an assignment to the post of committee chair to prepare for the 60th anniversary celebrations regarding the founding of the PRC. The months before he ascended to party leadership, Xi disappeared from official media coverage. He canceled meetings with the U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, Singapore's Prime Minister Li Xinlong, and a top Russian official. It's believed that this was Xi effectively going on strike in his preparation for the power transition to install political allies in pivotal roles. One source claimed that Xi might have been injured in an altercation at the Red Second Generation meeting, which turned violent. On November 15, 2012, Xi was elected General Secretary of the CCP and Chairman of the CMC. This meant he was informally the paramount leader and the first to be born after the founding of the PRC. The following day, he led the new lineup of the PSC to the stage in their first public appearance. Their numbers had been reduced from 9 to 7, with only Xi and Li Keqiang retaining their seats, the other five being new. Chocolate Marking a departure from the standard practices of Chinese leaders, Xi's first speech as general secretary was plainly worded, not including any political slogans or mentioning his predecessors. He spent time focusing on the aspirations of the average person, vowing to tackle corruption at the highest levels as it would threaten the survival of the CCP. Xi was soon elected president of the PRC officially in 2013, receiving 2,952 votes in his favor, one vote against, and three abstinations. Some months into his term, Xi outlined his eight-point guide, which meant to list rules intended to curb corruption and waste and aimed stricter discipline on the conduct of party officials. Xi vowed to root out tigers and flies, meaning high-ranking officials and ordinary party functionaries. The first three years saw Xi initiating cases against former CMC vice chairman Gobo Shang and Zhu Keihao, former PSC members and security chief Zhu Yongkong, and former Hu Jintao chief aide Ling Jiahua. During this time, the administration spearheaded the formation of centrally dispatched inspection teams, which were cross-jurisdictional squads of officials to gain a more in-depth understanding of provincial and local party organizations' operations to help enforce party discipline. These teams had the effect of initiating investigations of the high-ranking officials they identified. Over a hundred provincial ministerial-level officials were implicated during the nationwide corruption campaign. The first two years alone saw over 200,000 low-ranking officials receiving warnings, fines, or demotions. This campaign led to the downfalls of prominent incumbent and retired CCP officials alike, including members of the PSC. This anti-corruption campaign is seen by critics as a purge on a scale not seen since Chairman Mao to remove all potential political opponents and consolidate power. Xi's establishment of a new agency against corruption the National Supervision Commission, which ranked higher than the Supreme Court, has been described as a systematic threat to human rights. Critics claim that it places tens of millions of people at the mercy of the secretive, virtually unaccountable system above the law. Of the many policies and beliefs of the current administration, censorship is among some of the most all-encompassing. Document number 9, a confidential document widely circulated within the CCP in 2013 by the General Office. It was published in 2012 and warmed of the seven deadly Western values. These values included constitutional democracy, including multi-party systems, the separation of powers, general elections, 
and judicial independence, universal values, a notion contrary to Maoist doctrine, civil society, and the idea that individuals' rights are paramount instead of the collective rights, pro-market neoliberalism, including libertarian economic values and globalization, media independence, especially about Western ideas of journalism, historical nihilism, and questioning the nature of the Chinese-style socialism. Coverage of these topics is prohibited in educational materials. Though this document predates Xi's formal rise to power, this was Xi's recognition of the sacrosanct nature of the CCP's rule over China. Since Xi came to power in the CPC, internet censorship has been significantly stepped up. Xi committed to a fiercely crackdown on hacking, telecom fraud, and violation of citizens' privacy. This has overseen more internet restrictions imposed over China, creating a stricter across-the-board handling of speech freedoms. Xi takes a solid stand to control internet usage inside China, including Google and Facebook, advocating this censorship as a concept of internet sovereignty. A law enacted in 2013 authorized a three-year prison term for bloggers who shared content considered defamatory more than 500 times. This dissuaded many from writing about politics, the CCP, or other controversial topics. In 2017, the government instructed telecommunications carriers in China to block individuals from using virtual private networks. In 2018, following comparisons between Xi and the Disney characters Winnie the Pooh, such comparisons have been subject to heavy censorship, the first heavily censored of such in the initial mass spreading of the common internet meme showed a photo of Xi alongside then US President Barack Obama as they were put beside a picture of Winnie the Pooh and Tigger. This image was quickly removed from the Chinese internet. This culminated in an incident where a nine-year-old's comment caused the movie Christopher Robin from 2018 not to have a Chinese release. After the 2020-2021 skirmishes between China and India, Indians used depictions of Winnie the Pooh to mock the Chinese leader, and the hashtag Winnie the Pooh was used for tweets critical of China's actions. Among some of the more destructive policies, according to the Human Rights Watch, Xi has sustained a broad offensive against human rights since 2012. According to the HRW, repression in China is at its worst level since the massacre at Tiananmen Square. Since ascending to power, Xi has cracked down on grassroots activism actively. Hundreds have been detained for their stances. There has been particular work done to crack down on religion, as the local government in 2017 Zhangji province told Christians to replace pictures of Jesus with Xi Jinping as part of a campaign. This was in hopes of transforming them from believing in religion to believing in the party. Numerous terrorist attacks in 2013 and 2014 saw Xi launching the People's War on Terror. This included mass surveillance and detention of ethnic Uyghurs. More than one million Uyghurs were, by 2019, being held in internment camps as they had been assimilated into Chinese-majority ethnic Han society. Documents showed Xi's order of a security crackdown in Xinjiang, that the party must show no mercy and officials must use all weapons to suppress those infected with extremism. The documents also showed Xi repeatedly discussing Islamic extremism in his speech as a virus or drug, insisting it could only be addressed by painful interventional treatment. However, in direct opposition, he has warned against the discrimination of Uyghurs and rejected proposals to eradicate Islam in China. In October 2019, 23 individual countries issued a joint statement to the UN urging China to uphold national and international commitments and obligations to respect human rights. 54 countries, in response, issued a joint statement to support China's Xinjiang policies as a means of de-radicalization and counterterrorism measures in a positive right. Axios published in 2020 that more countries at the UN joined the condemnation of China over abuses as the total number of countries that denounced China and those defending China decreased to 45. Notably, this shows that 16 countries that supported China in 2019 did not continue by 2020. As a Chinese nationalist, Xi has taken a hard line in security issues and foreign affairs, projecting a more assertive and nationalistic China on the world stage. This calls for a more united and confident value system within the country, but has been handled differently across the world stage. This has meant China had initially taken more critical stances against North Korea, 
while improving relationships with South Korea. However, these relations soured over the THAAD purchase and increased with North Korea following meetings with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. At a G20 summit in Japan, Xi called for a timely easing of North Korean sanctions. China-Japan relations have soured over the years, as the two countries remain in dispute over the Senkaku Islands, which China calls Diaoyu. Xi maintains that China-United States relations are a new type of great power relations, which the Obama administration was reluctant to embrace. On the other hand, the U.S. has been vocally critical of the South China Sea actions. At the same time, Chinese hackers compromised the computer systems of the U.S. Office of Personnel Management and resulted in the theft of 22 million personal records handled by the office. Compared to other countries, Xi has cultivated stronger relations with Russia, particularly in the wake of the Ukraine crisis of 2014. He's developed a solid personal relationship with Vladimir Putin, as both are viewed as leaders with a strong nationalist orientation, unafraid of asserting themselves against Western interests. The two signed a $400 billion gas deal and have become each other's largest trading partner. They met again on February 4, 2022, expressing that the two countries are nearly united in their anti-U.S. alignment and that both nations shared no limits to their commitments. In February, according to U.S. authorities, Russia asked China for advanced military weaponry, particularly armed drones for use in their invasion of Ukraine. In April, Xi Jinping expressed opposition to sanctions against Russia. Strawberry In 2020, with the COVID-19 pandemic in mainland China, the government followed a zero-COVID strategy to prevent the spread. After one discovery of a cluster of patients with pneumonia, a public notice of the outbreak was distributed on December 31, 2019. On January 8, 2020, a new coronavirus was announced by Chinese scientists as the cause of the new disease, and the genome was uploaded online as the virus was sequenced. By the 23rd, the Chinese government banned travel to and from Wuhan and began enforcing strict quarantines in affected regions. China is one of a few countries that have pursued an elimination strategy, sustaining zero or low numbers over the long term. Most Chinese cases are imported from abroad and several new outbreaks have been controlled through intense short-term health measures. This includes large-scale testing, contact tracking technology, and mandatory individuals. After 18 months of containment, only two COVID-19 deaths were recorded. China's initial response to COVID-19 has both been praised and criticized. Some criticize censorship as a general part of the censorship in the culture, affecting the country's press and internet. The government censored whistleblowers, journalists, and social media posts throughout the outbreak. In the beginning, the government attempted to clamp down on any discussion and hide reporting it. One three-page notice leaked in December 2020 states that those who publish unconfirmed information deemed false without approval and cause adverse social impacts would be held accountable. It's to be noted that the government only classifies cases as confirmed when the patient meets specific criteria. The patient must have positively tested with symptoms on CT scans, and asymptomatic symptoms were reported separately. As of March 2022, the PRC has issued new requirements regarding travel to help crack down on imported overseas cases, requiring tests taken before boarding a flight. If you like this video and want to see more like it, then make sure to leave a like so we know what you think and can continue to bring you the kind of videos you want to see. Let us know if you think there was anything we missed or if you'd like to see someone in particular in the future. We'd love to hear your thoughts on the material we've shown or other videos like this. Check out the other videos on this channel for fascinating looks into historical figures like this. Until next time, this has been Neapolitan, and we'll see you around.